Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about some books that I really want to read. So with everything going on in the world right now, I have time to read, I guess. I haven't been reading physically in the past three months since 2020 started. I've maybe read less than five books physically. I've read 45 books this year so far and only maybe five of them have been physical books because I'm an audiobook fiend and I just put on audiobooks when I do other things. So I know that I need to start reading more physically. That has been a big goal of mine for this year. So I have a little bit over 10 books over here that uh, I have compiled that I really want to read. Who knows when I'm actually going to get to these? <laughs> we will see. Um, but first, I guess I'll talk about my current reads. So here's the dust jacket for it. But it's Crescent City by Sarah J Mass. I just hit the halfway mark of this. I've been reading it for like a week. <laughs> And I'm really loving it. This is Sarah J Mass's first adult fantasy book all about a woman named Bryce who's half human half fae. Basically a bunch of people that she loves dies because of this demon. She wants to hunt this creature down to basically get vengeance and figure out who killed the people that she loves and this angel named Hunt will help her along the way and it's basically a romance between them. I've yet to get to the romance part and it's killing me because I want it so badly. <laughs> I'm really enjoying this. I'm a sucker for Sarah J Maas, unpopular opinion here, but I love her a lot and I will read anything that she writes except for maybe the Catwoman book. I don't know if I'm interested in that just because I'm not interested in Catwoman, you know what I mean? And then my next read is The Forbidden by Jodi Ellen Malpass. This is my audiobook, but I do have a physical version of it. Um, I'm listening to it through Libby. I can't talk about this book very much because it's supposed to be shocking as to what the forbidden of the forbidden aspect of this book is but basically Annie has this really big connection with Jack but then there's something forbidden happening that's all I can give you because it's supposed to be a shocking thing as to why it's forbidden and the thing that's forbidden in this book is something that I do not enjoy reading about so this book is not high on my priority list right now I do want to know what happens I read I believe it's called The Protector or The Guardian I don't remember by Jodi Ellen Malpass and really enjoying that one I like her writing but I am not really a fan of the concept of this book. I am interested to see how it pans out. Probably the only reason why I'm sticking to this is because I want to know what happens, but this is probably going to be maybe a three-star read from me. And that kind of leads me into the first book that I really want to read is Leave Me Breathless by Jodi Ellen Malpass. I'm hoping that this book gives me the same feelings as the other book by her that I read. This one is about Hannah and she is hiding from her horrible past in a village of Hampton and there she meets Ryan Willis. He works in private protection and when he meets Hannah he discovers he wants her like he's never wanted anything or anyone before. It's a romance between them but Hannah's like I can't be with you because of a certain thing going on from her past. She doesn't really want to be with him because of something going on in her past. So I'm very interested to see how this book pans out. I really love this cover uh, and I'm very interested to see what happens in this book. Hopefully this book will give me better vibes than the current Jodi Ellen Malpass that I'm currently reading. Next I have two books because they're part of a series. One is a reread. Um, in a perfect world, I would love to reread Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf. If you've never heard about this book, this is my current favorite young adult fantasy book. It's very unique, very different. I love it. This one is about our main character named Lady Zira and she is a heartless and so heartless people are made into heartless people by witches. So heartless people were originally humans but a witch can take a heart out of a human, put it in a jar, and that person will forever stay that age that when their heart was taken out and the witch essentially controls them because they now have their heart and the witch basically tells them what to do and they're owned by the switch. Uh, Lady Zira is the heartless to a witch. She is tasked by the switch to pretend to be a suitor for this prince because the witches are at war with the humans and they want to turn the prince into a heartless so that they can essentially control the king, his father. Um, so she pretends to be like a suitor for the prince. It's so good. This aspect of Zira being a heartless is one of the main things that I loved about this book. So I can't wait to dive back into that. Highly recommend this book. If you have not read it yet, please do. It is so stinking good. The reason why I wanted to read that one is because I have yet to read the sequel, Find Me Their Bones, because the first book ended on a huge cliffhanger. So uh, 
I've just been putting this off and I don't know why. So this is just a continuation to Zero Story and I can't wait to start this one. I hopefully will soon. Next is my most recent purchase. We have Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. Hopefully that's how you pronounce it. Um, I don't know much about this book except that it's Hate to Love. It has something to do with a bone crier. I don't even know what a bone crier is. Um, our main character is Elise in Bastine. Bastion? Bastine? I'm not sure, but those are the two main characters. I believe it's a Hate to Love romance. The art and the cover is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see it, but they like secretly have like daggers in their hands. So I'm very interested to read this book and figure out what it's all about. I've been hearing really good things about this one. So hopefully I love it as well. I'm re currently reading Crescent City. So I'm getting back into the fantasy genre. Um, I love fantasy, but it's been a while since I've read it and it takes me a while to read. Next, we have a romance I've been wanting to read for a while. We have The Bromance Book Club by Lisa K. Adams. I've been wanting to read this book for so stinking long. And I don't know why I haven't yet. It sounds so cute. So this is about our main character named Gavin who plays Major League Baseball. He discovers that his wife wants to get a divorce from him. Turns out his friends who are also on the baseball team have this bromance book club where they read romance books and they basically get advice from these romance books on how to like deal with relationships in real life. So they invite Gavin to their bromance book club so he can get pointers, I guess, on how to woo his wife all over again. So I'm very interested. I've heard great things about this book. Next we have The Hurricane by R.J. Prescott. Um, I don't know a lot about this book other than it has to do with fighting or boxing. But it's about Emily and uh, she's trying desperately to make ends meet long enough to finish her degree, which is math. She's a mathematician. But then she meets Cormac the Hurricane O'Connell at an old boxing gym. He's a lethal weapon with no safety and everyone is waiting for the misfire. He's never been knocked out before, but when he meets Emily, he falls hard. Unlike any other girl he's ever met, she doesn't want anything from him. Just being around her makes him want to be a better person. Very interesting. I haven't read a romance book dealing with boxing or fighting, so I think this will be a very interesting romance book for me. Next we have Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This is a young adult contemporary book dealing with chronic illnesses and I have a chronic illness so I am so excited to read this book. I'm hoping that I can really relate to these characters. Isabel has one rule, no dating because she's sick. She has rheumatoid arthritis and then she meets another chronically ill person and uh, she can't even pronounce what he is sick with. <laughs> He's gorgeous, fun, and foul-mouthed and totally into her and she might consider breaking her no dating rule for this boy. <laughs> that sounds really cute. I can't wait to read it. I know I haven't done it in a while, but we're gonna do my shout out mug here. I pull out a name from my mug. Um, I try to do it every video. I haven't done it in the past two and I'm very sorry. These are all the people that I'm subscribed to and I pull a name out of the mug and shout out someone. So let's see who this is. Let's see. We have Maureen Keevy. <laughs> Some of these people don't even know who I am. Maureen Keevy has no idea who I am probably. Um, but she is just a really fun person to watch. I love her energy. She's really, really, really sweet and nice. She's really close with Jesse and I watch his videos religiously. And so I started watching Maureen's videos religiously. So uh, I love her channel. She's really bright and bubbly and fun. And she reads a lot of YA books. Uh, so I get a lot of my YA recommendations from her. And I just love her channel. I love her content. Please go subscribe to her. I feel like she just deserves way more recognition because she is so great and awesome. So yeah. Next we have The Beast of Beswick by Emily Howard. This is actually our Lovely Ladies live show pick for the month of uh, March. <laughs> we're kind of behind. Uh, we're starting to do like mid-month um, live shows so we don't have the date set yet but it's gonna be sometime mid-April probably to give us time to read this. Um, but this is a historical romance book obviously and this I was told is a mix between The Taming of the Shrew and Beauty and the Beast, a retelling of both of those. So I'm very, very, very intrigued. This is about Lady Astrid. We'll stop at nothing to see her younger sister safe from a notorious scoundrel, even if it means offering herself up on a silver platter to the forbidding Beast of Beswick, who is Nathaniel Hart. He spends his days smashing porcelain, antagonizing his servants, and snarling at anyone who gets too close. And he has a scarred face, I believe, from war, maybe? She has to wed the Beast of Beswick, I'm pretty sure. So 
that sounds super interesting. Um, I'm super excited because I've been meaning to get more into historical romance books. If you want to join us and read this book with us, we will have a live show sometime in April. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be on Ashley's channel this time because uh, Ashley is such a historical romance lover. Next I have two middle grades that I'm actually really excited for. Um, so first we have A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Bad Beginning. I have never read The Series of Unfortunate Events. This was a series that a lot of people read growing up around the middle grade age. This book series is basically about the Baudelaire children, um, these three children right here, and their parents die, they become orphans. They're basically hopping from guardian to guardian um, while Count Olaf is trying to steal their family fortune. I watched the uh, Netflix series for this and really had fun, a lot of fun watching it. So hopefully uh, the books are like that as well or even better. Next we have The English Roses, A Perfect Pair by Madonna. The English Roses is a book that I grew up absolutely adoring and loving. It was my favorite book as a child. Basically about these four friends um, in middle school and this new girl comes to their school and she think they think since she's so beautiful that she has to be stuck up and snobby and mean and rude so they exclude her from the group um, when in actuality she is having a really hard time and doesn't have any friends and just lost her mom. These girls slowly start to realize that people are more than what they look like on the outside and they have to go through a lot to realize that. I didn't know that Madonna actually wrote like a series of books after the English Roses which is like the children's book so she wrote like little actual like chapter books about the English Roses so this is actually book number eight I don't think you have to read them in order I'm not um but this one is a perfect pair and it's about Nicole and she has a science lab partner and they start having a little crush on each other and that sounds so stinking cute um it looks really short and fun to read so I'm super excited. I should have read this around Valentine's time because I believe it takes place on Valentine's Day and they become Valentine's. This just seems like such a quick fun read during this very chaotic time in our lives. <laughs> Next we have Love Her or Lose Her by Tessa Bailey. This is the sequel to Fix Her Up which is a book that I really loved in 2019. Um, this is a romance between Rosie and Dominic. They are married already and Rosie really wants to get a divorce from Dominic because Dominic is not paying attention to her at all. Their interactions and time with each other is basically put on a schedule and she can't stand it anymore so she wants to divorce him and he had no idea that she felt this way so I believe that it's him trying to f understand what's going on with Rosie and basically fix their marriage I guess or I think they also go to couples counseling Mary maybe oh they go to marriage boot camp <laughs> That'll be very interesting. Um, I've been hearing mixed things on this one, so we'll see where I fall on that scale. Next we have The Moment of Letting Go by J.A. Radmirsky. I read a J.A. Radmirsky book um, a couple years ago and absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorite romance books. So it looks like Sienna Murphy is a very plan-oriented person. She goes on a vacation to Oahu, I believe, and there she meets sexy surfer Luke Everett. And for the first time, she lets her heart take control. They have a no-strings-attached relationship for a couple weeks but then feelings start to develop between them. I'm very interested to see how this book goes because uh, the only J.A. Remersky book that I read was The Edge of Never, and I really enjoyed that one. And lastly, we have Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurin. If you see, I have a bookmark in here. <laughs> I believe I read to page like 20 or something. Let's see. Oh, I read to page 44. I put it down, I believe, because a new release just came out and I was really excited for it and I forgot everything that happened in this. <laughs> I really want to read it though, I'm really interested. This is a fantasy, I want to say new adult fantasy people are saying because it's a little bit graphicer on the steamier times than a young adult book. This is about Louise and Reed. They are put in, I believe, a marriage of convenience, but Reed is a witch hunter and Lou is secretly a witch and he doesn't know. So I'm very interested to see how that pans out. I've been hearing great things about this book, so I'm, I really want to get in on all of the hype and figure out why people love this book so much. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some books that I will hopefully read soon. Um, we'll see. I have to get back to the swing of actually reading books physically. I feel like I have a wide range of different books I could read during this time when we are stuck in our homes. Let me know if you have read any of these books and your opinion on them. I would love to know and start up a conversation with you down in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye!